All right, lady, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to a happy and peppy and chilly January 20th, 2021 uh, show and tell. It's me, Lady Ada. Uh, with me is Mr. Lady Ada. We've got a uh, jam-packed 25 minutes of folks from around the world coming by and showing off their maker projects. What are they hacking on, 3D printing, soldering, coding, what have you. Uh, come on by. We have plenty of space in the stream yard. Uh, we're here again for 25 minutes, and we got Ask an Engineer. It's been a day, so let's kick it off with Kevin W. Digikey. Hey, Kevin. What's going on, Kevin? How are you doing, Kevin? I'm good. I'm ready to show in and tell in. Okay. <laughs> you got a lot of Digikey going on there, and I yeah, you got you're branded. I, I, I have Digikey, so I Digikey your Digikey, you're so like, you can Digikey. I just added this because I was on a call the other day and my microphone looked kind of bland. So it's like, oh, I'm going to throw a sticker right. on it. Okay. So one of these projects I'm working on, it was based off of one of your projects, Lamore, uh, on the MagTag, which is the COVID tracker. Okay. And what I did with this, and I know there's a better way to do it. I got it running about five minutes before the show. Yeah. If I hold a button and then hit the reset. Yeah. You know, it has to reconnect to the internet. It'll take a little while. Yeah. But then I have specific states set up. Oh, cool. So it's like, it, depending on what's held down on boot, it acts differently. Yeah. It, it basically, the way I set it up is it's running four different programs. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, so this is Minnesota. Well, look at that graphic. Ice skates. Nice. Lakes. The really cool thing is if I just let it sit, you know, just like in, in your program, it'll refresh once a day. Awesome. And it, it, the battery will last forever because it goes into deep sleep. Yeah. I shouldn't say forever. It'll last quite a while. A couple weeks. Well, I have a quest for you. Next up, since uh, we were chatting earlier about vaccinations, why don't you make a vaccination report? That's a good idea. How about for next week? Come by, and then you can do the, the U.S. Yeah, vaccination. New York, and then... New York just did a dashboard, and other states are doing dashboards. Um, so I think uh, that's a good uh, other side of the coin, because yeah. we, we did the infection and death rate, which is, like, terrible. Um, yeah. This well, one will probably be now. the next one. Who's all, who's all getting vaccinated, yeah, or how many people? And I know the vaccination isn't rolling out as quick as everybody at home. So that's a good idea. I think I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. we want to keep track of it. And then, you know, maybe what phase we're in too, because then for your state, yep. that'll also tell you when it's time you can you can come by. I'm, I'm definitely watching. It's different in New York. The phases are different than in other states. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're in 1B already, so. Yeah. You're cool. us. Okay, cool. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you so You're much, welcome. Kevin. And uh, in all of regards to DigiKey, as always, uh, we have a bunch of cool stuff. Lined up together to do with DigiKey, we'll be able to talk about that more as the year goes on. So thank you, Kevin, and everyone at the team. It's going to be a really good 2021. Looking forward. Yay. It is what we Kicking will make it. it off. All right. All next, right up. next up, Noah and Pedro. This is the way. Hey, hey. folks. Yes, this is the way. Um, so today we released the Dark Saber uh, 3D printed prop. So there's a learn guide up now. It's a, a, a video on YouTube and, and other places. Um, so it is here. Um, we can, one of the really cool things, we could change the color because it has Bluetooth um, connectivity with the Bluefruit app. Um, I spent a little extra time on making sure that I can make, so, so the parts can fit on all 3D printers. So even the smallest baby printers uh, can print it. So that's real nice. And also even the biggest printer. So folks have like a belt printer or just a really big DIY build. Uh, they could print the blade in a single piece if they want to. Uh, so cool. yeah, check it out. It was a lot of fun uh, working on it over the breaks and coming back into it and finally releasing it. So yeah. A great kickoff project. Uh, congratulations. It's lovely. I think, you know, that the swords that you've done have been really good. And what's nice is that you can reuse the same prop maker code from board to board. So it's like you get to focus on the 3D printing stuff that you love, not the coding stuff, which you kind of yeah. love, but could do without. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. big shout out to Liz who who did the the Bluetooth portion of the code. Aww. So it's like a, a remix of of the Master Sword code. Mm -hmm. so. Nice. Excellent. So, so I guess the, after this is another lightsaber, probably the Osaka one. Yeah. So <laughs> to go with the lightsaber, not kit. the not the end of it. Wait, which ones yeah. are the Osaka one? Uh, they're the like smaller a smaller ones. versions. Yeah. yeah, kind of like the oh. dual. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I just heard Dualies. they just released new ones, so it's it'll definitely be a new design. So cool. Okay, cool. All right, we'll be playing uh, the video that you made and also the very cool speed up. Uh, Everyone should watch the speed up this week because we put it on TikTok and people thought it was a rendering that it looks so good. So yeah. you always you always know you're doing good when people say, I think that's a rendering. I think it's fake. Uh, okay. I can tell by the pixels. All right, All right thank folks. you, now, Pedro. Congratulations you. on your sweet build. All right, paint your dragon. What's going on? What's the hey pixels? There. Greetings. Yeah, I've been working on the proto matter LED 
uh, library. You know what? I was just binge watching DS9 lately, and like every time they mention Proto Matter, I laugh now. Um, yeah. Anyway, the Proto Matter library. Why are you submitting PRs? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, something something it does right now is you can chain you can chain matrices. You can make a long line of them, but you can't you can't stack them this way or or this way. It doesn't it doesn't tile that way. So I've been working on code to let you chain and or tile matrices in combinations like that. And I don't have like enough like identical matrices to, to show it well. So I have like four mismatched matrices. I but, love it. It's like it's like two different socks, but like they're both wool socks. So who yeah. cares? Yeah. But it is it is one uh you know graphical canvas that you draw shapes on it and they will get tiled uh either if you have a zigzag arrangement or or you know progressive arrangement, but it's it's one surface now. And if I had animation, it would it would move across the whole set. So uh, that'll be a PR real soon now uh, for the next release. Okay, so that's a, it looks like what, a uh, 64 by 128? Uh, 64 by 32, and I've got four of them here, but they're different different pitches. No, I'm saying the entire display is 64 by oh, one. Yeah, 64 by 128, yes. Okay, so because you can't get a 64 by 128 pixel, but now you can now you can find DIY around smaller ones. Yeah. Okay, and this is awesome. That's not a hard limit. You know, it, it could in theory go go a bit bigger. There's there's lamp RAM and speed limitations, but there's not like something that's set in there that says yeah. this number is it. All right, sweet. Can't wait for gigantic gifts. Yeah. All right, thank you. What uh, season are you at in DS9? Oh I wrapped it up. I watched watched it. Yeah. I think the uh, the lounge singer. That's when it started getting harder for me to watch. It 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 was a little odd, but it it it. Um, what were we watching last night? Was it Voyager? We watched one of the worst Voyagers. Yeah. We just coincidentally the like I was just like this is really really bad. She found a ro yeah they found a robot in space and like you could tell the the budgets for that episode were really low and it, it was, was just like, like a silver mask. It was a silver something. mask. <laughs> I was just like I was like I understand like if it was the original series I'd be like look I understand you guys have like no yeah, special effects. Right. It's like whatever you found in the basement, but this was like Voyager. I'm like you guys could do better than this. There were there were things here and there like there there might have been you know strikes of writers or, or film crew where they would do these really low budget episodes like of next gen there were there were a couple rough yeah. ones i wonder if that's that's what happened yeah on, i don't know I'm, yeah i'm not going to put you on the spot and ask i'm just going to say something cisco is one of the best captains ever just Absolutely. Okay. yes all right. okay all right thanks so much phil b ensign phil b no i don't know all right colin what you got going on this week hey could definitely deal with some more cisco old fave um, well, besides Star Trek, we have our own future to deal with, huh? Yeah. Uh, it, it is the future. You know, brain-computer interface is kind of good. Yeah, could you get on that already? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, somebody did. Thanks, by the way. Uh, this is the next mind. It's like a parasite in the back of my head, like a big plastic beetle. Bug. That's cool. It looks yeah. like an implant. This is Brain existence, Colin, Colin Club. Okay. It's just it's permanent now, yeah. Jelly really digging in nice and deep, getting the tendrils in. So this reads uh, signals from the visual cortex at the back of the brain. So it is reading your mind, but really it's reading what you're seeing. And um, if all goes well with what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking, then all you right. should be able to see- You gotta do a demo. Move this, uh, move a uh, control servo via Feather and the Unity. And your brain. Platform and all thanks to brain. Yep. So okay. So you're there. looking at this thing. So you got you see that guy right there. You see that pointer thing that right. you're, the you're gonna look at that with your brain. Feather is below, and I'm gonna look at that with my, my your brain. eyes. I'm gonna what I'm gonna look at is is these things. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna look at the center one. Oh, okay. there we go. Oh, look at the, the left one. one. Oh. Look at the right one. Huh. I said huh. There. Not <laughs> voice activated. Don't be fooled. Yeah. Go back to center. Center. Okay. Yep. There we go. And it's uh, you know, it's got to be the most reliable um, brain computer inf interface I've ever used. I've used. It, it's really reliable. It's not like incredibly fast. I found it takes like one no, or two it, seconds. No, it's not fast, but it works. It's like and it works. Reliable. Yeah. It's gonna happen within a couple seconds, and that is a big step from what I've seen. So you know, I I, I actually think there's a lot of possibilities here. Yeah, and you have a all about. I thought this was interesting because I was like, "Oh, this is like duck hunt for your brain." The way it yeah, works. yeah, right. Responding to the frequency, the flashes, like the you know the abrupt changes, right? 
And it also reminds me, I was talking to you guys about the, the uh, Captain Power toys when I was a kid. Those were really big. And they responded to um, the show had flashes in certain areas. Yeah. A lot like this, which is strange because it makes sense. So yeah, so we got a learn guide up on how to use this with uh, Unity to uh, communicate over serial with like a, a feather. Yeah, it's a new device. Um, it's called NextMind. We bought one and the goal was how would you use probably one of the best. Uh, we're not affiliated with them. We don't sell these. We just, I've been trying to find one that's really good for the last decade. And so far, this is the best one. And how would you control Adafruit Electronics with something that, you know, reads your mind. So if you want to experiment with stuff like this, check it out. We got the guide calling to the TikTok. Yeah, this could be, I mean, it's it's not inexpensive, but I think that people who want to do brain control or accessibility projects, and yeah. now you can interface it with hardware. Like it's, it's again, not super fast. It's not going to be as good as eye tracking maybe, but it does work based on what you're looking at, which I thought was just so cool. And we uh, show how to do it with Unity, which a lot of people use. That means you can do a lot of cool stuff with it and you can hook it up to open source electronics. So good work, Colin. Cool. Thanks. A little glimpse, little glimpse of the future, Colin 2040. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. You're, you're getting to the Borg state, Colin. Wow. Okay. Next. Yeah, well, I'm working up. on trying to make it fashionable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Next up, Liz. How's it going, Liz? What you got going on? Hi. Um, so I'm starting to work on a, a new MIDI controller with a, um, and he talked about wanting to assign different um, MIDI uh, CC numbers to the different buttons. So I was working on kind of the logic for how that UI would work. So I've got a rotary encoder here um, and you can spin it up. Yep. And then can adjust the numbers. Oh, and you then, select it with the yeah. rotary encoder. Okay. And, and then, then you... I click again. And now that number says 70. And I click here, and 83 is a nice number. Now it's 83. Uh, so yeah, you can um, then scroll through. Goes back yeah, to the bottom. Yeah, so cute. Yeah, uh, this is the grayscale um, display too. Yeah. I like <laughs> so that's what I've been working on. All right. Well, looks right. awesome. Outstanding. And uh, thanks for the help and the assist with the uh, Bluetooth stuff with the saber. Of course. Yeah, that was really fun. All right. Thanks so much, Liz. Okay, next up, we're going to go to Joey. Joey, what you got going on? Howdy, y'all. Um, so I was working on this project because uh, a few weeks ago, RWB had some of these um, sharp memory displays. Yeah. Kind of cheap on Twitter. And I wanted to do a take on a like a little screen with sensors or the ability to add sensors. And so I came up with this idea for, I couldn't figure out what to call it, but then oh, someone- Oh, dude, it's got L cars. Love it. That's right. Someone on Twitter said it was like a tricorder. So I'm calling it the Pi quarter. Yep. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to try and share my uh, my screen if that's possible. Yeah, go for it. As soon as I see it pop up down here, I'll add it. All right. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's got this little touch touch panel and um, yeah, the ability to display information on the screen and that's using cool. y'all's Stemma and Stemma QT standards, I have chained together some environmental sensors and a little speaker so that I could make it a. We didn't plan this. We talked about DS9 earlier. And yeah, no. And we got we, we didn't the, quarter. This is an unscripted show. We got the Borg show. plugged technology. This is cool. Totally. So yeah, um, I, I'm not sure you can hear, but it's playing the little tricorder sound. Oh, um, cool. I love the little capacitive touchpad action there. It's just like I can tell the patience it took to lay it out. It looks great, though. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, the, the Oshpark did like it, it's That's awesome, beautiful, cool. beautiful uh, in the after dark. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so this week I was just brainstorming like fun projects to do with it. I did something involving, oops, I did something involving a um, soil moisture sensor that uses like this nine pin connector that's similar to what y'all have in the monster mask. And um, yeah, just, uh, it seems like a fun little project. I mean, it's not quite perfect this time. I'm going to make another revision, but yeah, just figured I'd come and share. Great stuff. Right. I so love far, your aesthetic. So far the lineup tonight, we, we have things of light, uh, futuristic uh, cosplay swords, brain, machines that can control physical stuff and tricorders you can make yourself. So we're off to a good start. Not a bad Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, the dark saber is a little bit, you know, it's like a different, slightly different world, but I think it counts. It's fine. It all works out. All, all right, right cool. well, thanks so much, Joey. All sci-fi all the time. All right, next up, let's go to uh, Pierre. Okay. How are Hi, you? Yeah. What you got hey, going Pierre. on this week? So this week, um, uh, I came around a few times uh, during the, the COVID-19 uh, period because we we worked um, on several, um, 
Well, stuff first to help the first respondent and then to try and make more, uh, so make safer space. I work at Sorbonne University back in, mm -hmm. in Paris. And uh, of course, we have many um, students and that we are trying to keep safe during the, the epidemics. So uh, the last thing we've been working on is this little device. Um, one issue that is uh, thought at least to be uh, quite important by epidemiologists is the, uh, contamin the airborne contamination, mm -hmm. mostly by small aerosols, uh, respiratory aerosols that, that propagate viruses, especially in confined areas like a, a closed room like this one, where social distancing only goes so far because mm -hmm. if a few people in, in um, um, the same closed space uh, after half an hour uh, distance no longer matters it's just uh, an average charge of uh, viral droplets uh, viral field droplets that, that is around you so in order to um, identify a correct um, ventilation measure uh, be it active or passive uh, we are now developing these uh, little devices mm. uh, that are based mostly on Adafruit um, products and, yeah. and material. And they are CO2 um, sensors. Great. Uh, the idea is that we are using CO2 as a proxy because uh, if you subtract the average CO2 level in a room, um, and if, if, if to that level you subtract the average level in your local atmosphere, then you have a, a quite an accurate measure uh, of the amount of air that has been expired by all the people yeah. around. So you can you can trace uh, how much uh, air has been circulating between people. And there are a few um, medical article recently that have been posted that have been uh, published. Sorry, that suggest that uh, staying around or below 1000 ppm of CO2 in a closed environment is kind of a safe aim um, to try and follow. So okay. we are um, progressively um, integrating these in all our classrooms at the university. And I made a little switch here so you can recognize one of your um, OLED feather wings, I guess. Yeah. With the um, ppm CO2 concentration, there is an RTC with an ADA logger uh, feather wing that tells you the um, uh, time and date. It's all recorded inside in small um, micro SD cards. And you can choose uh, a threshold there. I I'm not sure you're seeing that quite well, yeah. but you can choose a threshold. And if the measurement goes be below the threshold that you have fixed, then of course the RGB lens will turn red like this. Okay, that's so you can leave know. that in some part of your classroom or in in the lab where the students are working or you are working, and uh, whenever you see the red light uh, showing up, you just open the doors and and the windows, and usually in a matter of fifteen minutes, uh, the concentration drops down, back down, and you can resume. I mean, normal winter uh, heating with closed uh, windows. So it's a way of making a more rational um, practice of ventilating the rooms that are not um, um, actively ventilated by by by, uh, by VMCs or, or, or the likes. Excellent project. Uh, um, well, hopefully we can think. Send us a link to it. So, sorry, excuse me, I interrupted you, sorry. So, oh, no, I guess they send a link. We, if, if, if and when you have how to build these and more, we'll help get the word out. Yes, cool. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm presently um, writing um, um, a tutorial. All, all of this all, all will, will be published in uh, under um, um, uh, open source, uh, both design and, and soft. And the idea is to make them as cheap and as conveniently buildable uh, with uh, little experience as possible, which is why I, I went for your uh, stacking system of feather wings, because here you, you've got a, um, a feather M0 Proto. Yeah, would you like to get to other people? Uh, other can, can, and can the you bring this up so that, the detail? Can we have a couple other people that we have to get to? Oh, sure. Okay, Sorry so 
Please anyway, write down. It's very cool. Email, and I want to make sure we get to them too. Uh, write up, send us a link, and we'll post it up so people can build this as well. This is very awesome. Sure. People Sorry, actually cool. need this. Um, one side note before we move on. So yes. I read an article about how an HVAC architect who had a uh, gym membership and they were helping a gym reopen used a similar system. Okay. And they were able to do that. Basically, they said, here's how we can make sure if the CO2 is at this level, that means too many people are breathing yeah. and it's not um, good airflow. So, and that was then that's studied that's by the very idea. Yeah, then it was open. So, thank no, it's, you. it's awesome. I thank, love this stuff. Thank you so much. It can be very cheap. It can be less than 100 bucks, typically. Awesome. So. Yeah, no, the CO2 sensors are great quality and like $30 these days. It's, it's right. so great to see. Okay, drop me a note, PT at Adafruit, when you're ready to publish that, and we'll help get the word out and more. I will. Thank you. All right, next up, we're going to go to Dan and then Mark. Dan, if you can each keep it to like five minutes each, we can get to the last two folks. Dan, what you got going on this week? Hey, how you doing? The, what I tried showing, there we go. Is it working? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, what I was trying to show last week, um, I've mentioned the uh, power chair, the open source power chair that I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, pardon the uh, bouncy camera. Come on. Ah, canine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the uh, little bit of a prototyping, thanks to C. Grover, was able to uh, get a little servo function using the accelerometer. We got a joystick that I ripped out of one of the uh, old controllers, and I'm going to use the servos to turn the potentiometer into... Um, was that a mechanical one? I guess they you yeah. can buy them, but hey, why buy it when you can make it? So, uh, oh, seriously? Oh, wait a minute. Is it plugged in? <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one little detail. I forgot to uh, connect it. Oh, watch out. <laughs> I love the little jerry rig. There, there you go. go. All right. And the, the wheel goes. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, an awesome project. Good progress. I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed. You got the accelerometer, the servo. You're ready to do the integration. Yeah, and, and it fits with tonight's theme. You got all the other stuff. And also, you're talking about Star Trek. I yeah. actually, I've been binge watching starting with TNG. And I actually have, um, uh, with the Enterprise, season three, episode 21 on my other screen. See, there's a theme going on. I think it's because we're all ready to build the future and you have to have something to look forward to. And, uh, you know, first we all have to get along with each other and then we could do Federation of Planets, you know, stuff like that. So, all right. Good stuff. Thank you so much, Dan. Be excellent to each other. Awesome. Yay. Thank you, Dan. All right. Last up. Mark, hey, play Mark. us out. Play us right. out. Get a minute or well, two. There's one thing I really hope we still have in the future, and that's weather. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's like a burning ember. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And actual different weather. Uh, so now I finally have my, how it started and how it's going. Yeah. Okay. Looks great. I'm not, yeah, it's never going to focus on this, uh, webcam, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually now not quite sure what to do because I've used my Ada box before the next one's on my doorstep. Uh, and all the others have done a project about the week before the new one showed up. But the difference between doing this in Arduino and the new one in CircuitPython and the MegTag is just huge. This thing has way more information from different data sources on the internet, Adafruit.io and the uh, Open Weather API. And this one took half the time that the Arduino-based one did. But the goal, um, make it fast so. so you can get your project built. Yeah. Right, we'll come up with some more Ink projects. I mean, the nice thing about CircuitPython is you can just I, Save the files and, and do something else. I think for the for the old timers, like maybe us, the the scripting languages were made for the internet. So when you have a chip that's powerful enough, and then you have scripting languages, like of course it's easier to do, and of course like it can get stuff all off the internet because it was born on the internet. Where like, you know, C and Arduino stuff, it wasn't really meant. It wasn't designed to, to open up a socket or like you know grab a JSON file and parse something. It wasn't really made for that and fonts and graphics and all that stuff. And I think it's neat that we have this collision course now with chips that are fast enough. And then the ease of use with something like CircuitPython, we're able to you know, do all these things really fast. 
And, uh, you know, I guess there'll always be folks that say, well, you know, pure C is always faster. Yeah, but you did the project in half the time. So, <laughs> you know, which one is it? So this is a really, this is like one of my favorite examples. Like if you can make a weather station in a few hours, door to door with everything, then that's a successful dev environment, programming thing, hardware experience. Yeah, I think the longest part was trying to do the design because I'm a very bad UI designer. And I just kept having to adjust it to try to make it look good. But again, it was so easy to change and adjust compared to doing an Arduino. So um, yeah, and I do thankfully have one other big tag sitting around. So I'll have to come up with one more well, project. We have a lot more in stock soon too. It's became yeah. really popular. Yeah, we have to get the ink screens and yeah. All right. All well, right. thank you so much, Mark. Keep coming back. And uh, thanks for the kind words and support with CircuitPython. This is like one of the examples that um, we always like to point to, which is something that's useful that someone can use every single day that's easy to make that they own that they can modify and it's not from you know another company that has like a microphone in it or like who knows like you don't know what's running on it and this is something that's uh really useful every single day you kind of want to look at the weather yeah i look at this several times a day now just yeah, it's yeah. on our fridge. For, for you, it's, it's a matter of life and death because it's so cold there. <laughs> it's above zero today, so I'm happy. But yay, it's gonna be minus twenty in a day. So right. I like seeing you know when this you know when is it gonna be warm again? So I'm like, oh, we could go out like on the weekend. Yeah. Maybe it's like only fifty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wish. Well, thanks so much, Mark. <laughs> Which is like normal for you. All right, thanks everybody. Okay, it's right on time. What an e epic show and tell. If you look at a across all of the projects. There's something there for everyone. We had Star Trek and Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what a cool, um, you know, start of 2021 together. Um, I think everyone's looking forward to building a cool future. And this is where it is. Whatever the makers are doing at nights and weekends is what the rest of the world is going to do eventually. I think we're all leading the way. So thanks for coming together Thank you, each everybody. week. I do have one little announcement. And what I'm going to do is after we disappear ourselves on here, I'll put up the graphic. Um, we're going to talk about this on um, Ask an Engineer, but for the next 100 days, when you place an order on Adafruit, we're tossing in a mask. We're doing 100 days of masking. We're just doing our little part. This is one of the things that um, the U.S. kind of needs to do right now. And they're cool, like goth masks. We got black, blue. We got black surgical masks. <laughs> so uh, if you're not placing an order, that's fine. But maybe for the next 100 days, we can all. Uh, do whatever we can to encourage people to wear a mask so we can get over this thing and so we can see each other. Looking forward to seeing some of you at a Maker Faire this year and more. So that's it. We'll be on Ask an Engineer in just a few minutes, and I'm going to try to play this graphic on the way out. Okay. Do this banner. Well, I wanted to try to use StreamYard to, uh, yeah. to do more stuff here. Okay, right here you go. Okay, so Let's see everybody on show in a few minutes.